Hi there. In our last section, we looked at creating a to-do app using pure vanilla Python. Uh, we, however, do want more functionality than what Python offers us um, without any type of code generation. And this is where Django comes in. Django is a complete uh, web framework written in Python that allows us to generate code really quickly and has uh, an exceptional amount of really, really robust uh, libraries and functionality, uh, some of which include its own built-in web server, its own virtual environment setup, as well as its own REST API framework. Now, these are some things that are really helpful to have when uh, making the transition from uh, intermediate to a, an advanced web developer where you really can um, exercise flexibility and do really whatever you want to. Um, so in this, in this lecture, we are going to be covering how to set up Django. So one of the uh, main things to notice about Python and Django uh, is that it functions within a virtual environment setup. Well, what is a virtual environment? In the context of Python, a virtual environment is a sandbox environment where different versions of libraries can be stored and called. So for the example of Django, Django 1.9 and Django 1.10 would be two separate uh, libraries that would run in two separate sandboxed virtual environments. So if I had a web application running on Django 1.9, I would have that in one virtual environment and then another uh, Django uh, application running on Django 1.10, I could have that in its own virtual environment. And this is really nice because we can have multiple libraries uh, with different versions running on different environments, which keeps our code nice and clean and separates um, separates libraries so that we don't have version conflicts. So how do we create a virtual environment? You do this in uh, by going to the command line and making sure that you have Python installed. I assume at this point you have Python installed. Um, and we use a Python command virtual EMV, which is a keyword for creating a virtual environment, and I'm going to create a virtual environment called ENV test. And if I hit return, you will now see that it is successfully creating that virtual environment. Now, what I want to do is I want to activate this virtual environment. So we've only created it, we haven't actually activated it. So if we list what is currently in our folder, you'll see that it has created this virtual environment for us. So if we CD into ENV, and then we see e into the bin folder, which is inside of that. Um, no such file. It's oopsie. It's uh, env test. So cd into env test, and then cd into bin. You will see that we have the activate file, which we can run in our uh, in our command uh, when in our terminal. So I'm going to cd back into our the root of what I consider to be the, the project working directory. Um, and I am going to run a special command which activates or source, which runs the activate file and it will activate our virtual environment. So what I need to do is I need to run the activate file, which can be found in env test in the folder bin. Uh, and then the file activate. So if I run this, what you'll notice is env test has now been activated. And you can see this because at the beginning um, of our line, um, the, 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 the sandbox uh, env test uh, is showing up over there. So that's great. So from here, we can install any uh, Python libraries that we want to using Python's package manager, uh, which is called pip, and it's spelled like that. Uh, and uh, it, those libraries will only exist within that virtual environment. So the next thing that we need to do is actually install the Django library into this environment that has been activated. So we do this by saying pip install, and then we tell Python or tell pip 
what uh, which library we would like to install into that virtual environment. So Django is really great. We just say Django, and now we just need to tell pip which version of Django. So we do that by uh, uh, saying equals equals, and then the latest version, uh, as from the recording of this video, is 1.10. So here we are going uh, pip install Django equals equals 1.10, and this should install Django 1.10 onto our uh, virtual environment env test. So I hit return. You'll notice it's it's now going onto the web and finding all of the packages that are required for Django and it is actually installing them onto this virtual environment. So a great way that we can test to see if Python has or Django has actually been installed is by running python dash m Django and then dash dash version and this will tell us if Django is installed, and if so, what version? And great, we can see that Django 1.10 has been installed. So now we usually have quite a few libraries that we would need to install the same way as this, and it does become a bit uh, long-winded to have to do this for every single library, especially when you are running on multiple setups. So for example, if you're working with a colleague and collaborating on the same project using version control, uh, if you have a local environment which is separate from your staging environment, which is separate from your production environment, it really becomes a hassle to have to run uh, the installation of your packages on every single setup. And you don't necessarily want to keep these packages on a version controlled server. You'd rather just run pip install and let pip go and fetch the package every time you set it up as opposed to just leaving it uh, redundantly and taking up space unnecessarily within a version control environment. So the way that we get around this is we create a requirements.txt file. So I'm going to go into sublime text and then I'm already in the Django folder and I'm going to create requirements.txt uh, and, and essentially what I'm going to do here is I'm going to list uh, all of the required libraries that I want for my installation. So the only one that I want at the moment is Django 1.10. So I can put Django and then equal to equal to uh, 1.10. So this is great. Now we can add any other libraries that we need to below this. Uh, there are many, many Python libraries that you can install on here. But, um, so the, the way that we would do this is by actually now running pip install the same way that we did and then recursive or r and then requirements of txt txt and if we run that it's going to give us requirements already satisfied so django has already been installed we don't need to install it again so for the purposes of this video what i'm going to do is create another virtual environment and I'm going to call that test so not env test just test and now even though we have created this virtual environment called test this new one that I've just created now we are still setting sitting in env test which is our original virtual environment and then I'm going to go source and then I want to go into the test virtual environment not the env test bin and activate and now what it should do is it should activate our test virtual environment. So this is great. We have two virtual environments running, um, not at the same time, but I can switch between them if I want to. So if I want, if I'm working on an old version of Django and I want to upgrade it at some stage, but I don't want to up upgrade it right now, I can now switch between my two virtual environments by running source and then activating it. So this is great. Now, if I do the same Django version test, as we did before. So if I say Python m Django dash dash version, if I copy that and I paste it, what you will notice is it says no module named Django, which means within the context of this virtual environment, Django has not yet been installed. Well, this is where the requirements.txt comes to the rescue. I can literally just uh, type out pip install dash r requirements.txt and now it will go and read our requirements.txt file, see Django and 1.10, and it will go and install that. And now if we run our Python Django version, you will see that 1.10 has successfully been installed.